The book is really aimed at anybody who wants to build a four-stroke engine uh, or modify a four-stroke engine to make more power to make it smoother. So that could be any period engine, uh, right up to a modern engine. Uh, modern engines are more sophisticated and they're assembled to tighter clearances and older engines. However, a modern engine can still benefit from this book because there are, there are things described in there that um, you don't necessarily get in production cars that are really to do with motorsport. However, um, they can be incorporated into a um, into produ into production vehicle. Um, the reason being is their production vehicle, it has to, ha it has to range, run under a, a full, you know, from arctic conditions to you know, searing, uh, searing heat, um, where, where a racing engine doesn't. There's no reason why you can't narrow that, uh, that scope down to a, 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 shorter, a shorter sequence and, um, and, and the engine can be smoother and make more power. Engine brew painting came about years ago when, um, when racing formulas, uh, the, um, the, engine, the, uh, the engines had to be standard engines. So in other words, you only could use standard parts. So what manufacturers did, they had standard parts and they examined the parts very closely to find, for example, a camshaft that might give a marginally higher lift than another camshaft, both, both standard ca camshafts, or a, um, a cylinder head when it was fitted that might give more a slightly higher compression ratio. And so if you assemble a camshaft with a higher lift and a head that gives a higher compression, you should end up with an engine that makes more power. And you can take this a lot further to the smoothness of running of components and, and that sort of thing. That, that's the original, uh, that's how blueprinting came about. But nowadays, blueprinting doesn't mean that. Blueprinting nowadays, um, most people associate, it's a loose term, but I mean, most people associate it with Carefully putting an engine together, whether it has any any high performance components in it, is is debatable. I deal with quite complex themes, but I try to simplify it in in an easy language, uh, using the minimal amount of words to get complex point across. If you want to make an engine go faster it means you you are given any given engine it means you place it under greater stress and then the the, uh, the finish of components it has to be that much better otherwise if have any flaw in, in, a, in a component will show up and, and you can get breakage or, or failure so um yes that's what i have tried to do uh for instance with things to do with uh, how to alter a bolt or a stud to make it stronger a standard bolt or a stud or to improve um, the existing com components with the in the engine Without um, without replacing them, so I have tried to do that. Mm -hmm. from, so from that point of view, it is an introduction to engineering in a very in a very modest sense. Yes. Okay. The planning involved before you tune an engine is very important because um, almost anybody can take an engine to pieces with a bit of mechanical skill, do a few bits to it, and maybe make it go faster. But it's not or oh, make more power. But that's not really the issue. It's having usable power that you can that you can, it's practical for the purpose you want to use. So for that reason, it's it is very important to to um, to plan any modifications you do to an engine, um, because if you're going to have an engine and drive it in everyday traffic, and yet you tune it by enlarging the ports and raising the compression ratio, so that it has top end power, then uh, it really defeats the whole point because then you have a a very powerful engine at the top end but something that's diabolical to drive at the lower end. So from that point of view, it is very important to, to plan any modifications, which is why in the book I've tried to put that point across and explain some of the pitfalls involved. Um, when you don't plan an engine, you just leap in, in essence, and do things. So planning is very important. Um, well, secrets in the book that I want to give away. There are a number of things that I discuss, and I'll discuss them in general terms, that um, I've never seen in other literature. Um, mainly to do with um, mainly to do with the oiling system uh, and the cooling system and strengthening the block. Um, there's an awful lot of power to be made on, on any standard engine, 
by uh, by routing the uh, the coolant system uh, to such an extent where it has you have a, a positive pressure in the block, uh, and I've seen it on the dynamometer uh, dynamometer testing that uh, unquestionably you'll have more power if you if you have a positive pressure in, in the cylinder head in the block. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing is most cars the uh, the speed of the water pump compared with the speed of the crankshaft is grossly out of sync. Um, that's also explained in the in the book. Uh, from the point of view, if you just have a pulley, how to work out the size of, it, of your pulley, what to do, what ratio to have, uh, hopefully in, in simple terms. I've tried to do it in simple terms. And um, the other thing is a lubrication system. Um, putting a bigger oil pump in, raising the oil pressure is not the issue. The issue is directing the oil flow to the parts of the engine which are most stressed. And on every engine, the most stressed part is the crankshaft. So I've, put, I've tried to explain there again um, ways to get oil to the crankshaft and the, um, and the ratio of oil you want to the crankshaft versus the cylinder head. Um, that's, that's three things. There are other things in there as well. But that's different. Uh, the most common mistake I would think people make with their engine building is, um, is not checking components. Uh, they make an assumption. Um, any component in an engine that's not checked is, is an unknown, therefore one could argue that that's a potential point of failure. What I mean by that is um, if you have a, a little end bush, and you, and, uh, a little end pin rather, and you put it into the bush, uh, most people would assume that the bush is the tight fit and the rod. You don't know that unless it's checked. So it's, it's, that's, that's what it's all about. It's really about checking uh, and the clearances on an engine, going through it in a, in a methodical process. And in the book, that's what I've tried to set out, the methodical process. Um, and also in the back, the build sheets, um, they will help in, in the methodical process because um, it's a complex issue. However, if, if, you, get the, if you get a complex um, set of uh, uh, jobs that you have to do and you simplify it down to one or two jobs and you do it in sequence, one portion, second portion, third portion, fourth portion, then you've got a one whole jo complex job that's done in, in four easier steps. So that's the way to, to, um, to tackle any engine building.